All right. Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give our praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakaf Wadash. Double honest to the elders and our apostles of Great Millstone, taught us the truth and salutations to the hopeful elect that's around the four corners of the globe. Yahweh, who the world inwardly calls God, Bahashem is in the name. Yahweh Shai, who the world inwardly calls Jesus Christ and Jehovah. The Rakaf Wadash, which is the Holy Spirit. I'm the brother Iwa Lummy with the GMS Chicago branch out here in Chicago. Come back at you with another lesson. And Lord willing, I hope this lesson be edifying. You know, I'm just basically tired of this lesson. You know, these nations will do anything to keep us from our power. You know, referring to what these nations are doing right now, they're trying to keep our people, you know, in a state of sin, you know, uh, trying to, uh, you know, keep our heritage, you know, away, uh, away from us, you know, you know, by doing anything, you know, that they can, you know. So uh, I'm going to just start off with Judah, the fifth chapter. So this is Judah 5 and 1, you know, even back then, you know, uh, even back then, you know, uh, going to the book of Judges, you know, uh, you know, different things of that nature. You know, these different nations have always tried to, you know, you know, uh, you know, do things to keep us away from our power, you know, to keep us in sin, basically. So this is um, this is Judah 5 and 1. It says, then was it declared to uh, Hello Fernes, right, one of the generals of uh, Nebuchadnezzar. You know, you can read uh, Judah 1, you know, all the way back to this point. But I'm going to start at Judah 5. It says, the chief captain of the army of Ashur that the children of Israel have prepared for uh, have prepared for war and had shut up the uh, the passages of the hill country and have fortified all the tops of the hill uh, of the high hills and had laid uh, impediments in the campaign uh, campaign countries. It says whereas he was very angry and called all the princes of Moab and the captains of Ammon and all the governors of the sea coast. It says and he said unto them, Tell me now, ye sons of Canaan, uh who this people is, or Chanan, who this people is, that dwelleth in the hill country, and what are the cities that they inhabit, and what is the multitude of their army, and uh, and wherein is their power and strength, and what king is set over them, or the captain of their army, and why have they determined not to come and meet me more when all the inhabitants of the west? Then said uh, Achior, the captain of all the sons of Ammon, let my lord now hear a word from the mouth of thy servant, Right, because during this time, you know, Nebuchadnezzar was taking over a lot of shit, you know. It says, um, you know, he had different uh, nations under uh, under his foot. It says, uh, then said uh, Achior, the captain of the sons of Ammon, let my lord now hear a word from uh, from the mouth of thy servant, and I will declare unto thee the truth concerning this people, which dwelleth near thee, and inhabit, uh, inhabit, inhabiteth the hill countries, and there shall no light come out of my mouth. Of thy servant, it says these people are uh, the descendant of the Chaldeans, and they sojourn here to after in Mesopotamia, because they would not follow the gods of their fathers, which were in the land of Chaldea. Let me jump down just a little bit just to get to the point. Uh, let's see. Verse eleven, it says, therefore the king of Egypt rose up against them and dwelt subtly with them and brought them low. With laboring and brick and made them slaves, right? Going back to the book of Exodus, you know, when we were slaves under the Egyptians, you know, then what? The Lord raised up Moses, you know, to deliver us. It says, then they cried unto their power, and he smote all the land of Egypt with incurable plagues, so the Egyptians cast them out of their sight. And Yahweh dried the Red Sea before them and brought them to Mount Sinai and uh, uh, and Kay's barn and cast forth all that dwelt in the wilderness. So they dwelt in the land of the Amorites. And they destroyed, uh, destroyed by their strength all of them from uh, Espanon uh, or Esb uh, Esbon, and passing over Jordan, they possess all the hill country, and they cast forth be, uh, before them the Can uh, the Canaanite, the Pharisite, the Jebusite, and the uh, the Shemite, uh, uh, the Shechemite, and all the Gergesites, and they dwelt in the country many days. And wow, why were we able to do this? Because well, we had Yahweh about Shem on our side. It says, and whilst they sin not before their power, they prosper because the the power that hateth iniquity was with them. Right? Yeah, how about Shemiel was with us, uh, was with us, and those nations knew it. You know. It says, verse eighteen. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles, very sore, and were led captives into a land that was not theirs. And the temple of their power was cast to the ground, and their cities were taken by the enemies. It says, but now are they returned to their power and are come up from the place where they were scattered and have possessed Jerusalem, 
where their sanctuary is and are seated in a hill country for it was desolate. But this is the point I wanted to get to. Verse 20. Now, therefore, my Lord and governor, you know, referring to uh, the general uh, Hello Fernies, you know, now, therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error against this people and they sin against their power, let us consider that this shall be their ruin and let us go up and we shall overcome them. Right. So the nations, the heathen nations, you know, knew. That, you know, if Yahweh Hashem uh, wasn't for us, you know, that it would be easy to take us down. And the nations knew this going back then, you know. So let's get Psalms 83 real quick. You know, I just wanted to bring that quick point out. Let's get Psalms 83 real quick because the nation knows that Yahweh Hashem is our power source. And without that power source, you know, we'll be devoured on every side. So this is the book of Psalms 83 and 1. It says, keep not thou silence, O power, hold not thy peace, and be not still, O power. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Right, because all our enemies hate us, you know. Well, why do our enemies hate us? Because, well, we have a power that they don't have. You know, we're the chosen people of Yahweh Bashem Yahushar. It says, they have taken crafty counsel against thy, uh, against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. Right, where are the hidden ones? It says, verse 4, they, uh, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more remembered. Right. They want us to cut, you know, they want to cut us off from our heritage, because if we know our heritage, we know our power, which is Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. And the nations know with Yahweh Bashem Yahushai on our side, we're indestructible. You know, it's nothing that can befall us. You know, and the nations know that. So what is the best thing that these nations are doing? They're trying to, you know, present sin in front of our people. They're trying to make us go off. You know, the accuser of our brethren, which is Esau Edom, which I'm going to get into Revelations, you know. So these different nations, they... You know, they, they come together to subdue us so we don't have that power, you know, so they can uh, basically cut the ties between us and Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. It says, for they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee, the tabernacles of Edom, Talakia, the tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of the Moab and the Hagarians, Gabal and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. Right, so these different nations come together to subdue us, to cut us off. You know, which is from our power source, which is Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. And the nations know that's our power source. Because going back to Judah, the fifth chapter, which I just read, you know, one of uh one of uh Nebuchadnezzar's uh you know generals, you know, uh Heliphernes, you know, one of his servants, the Ammonite, which I just read in the Judah five and twenty, was given the breakdown, you know, of of our power, you know, how we was able to overcome because what we had Yahweh Bashem Yahushai on our side. And these nations know that. You know, so they didn't do anything necessary to cut off that ties between us and the Lord. But let's continue. This is the book of Revelation 12 and 10. It says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our uh, of our power and the power of his uh, Mashiach. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our power day and night. And that's what uh, Esau Edom does. You know, Esau Edom you know, put stumbling blocks, you know, in front of our people, you know, uh, sins and th different things like that, that, you know, uh, you know, uh, Esau Edom tries to throw us out, you know, throw at our people to cut, uh, to cut us off from our power. You know, he present this before our Lord and say, look at, the, look at what these people are doing. You know, Esau Edom is trying to keep us away from our power, which is Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. And like I said before, these nations know that our power source is Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Why do you think they don't want us to be claim, you know, proclaim our heritage? You know, which is Israel, you know, knowing what tribe we come from. You know, when the nation see, you know, that, that we know about our heritage, that we know about our power, you know, they become very, very afraid, you know. So the only thing that these nations can do is cut the ties between us and Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. But in these last days, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, you know, is bringing all that to naught. Yahweh Bashem Yahushai is putting his name back in his, uh, back in his men's heads, you know. You know, the truth is being declared, you know, throughout the four corners of the earth. Jake is waking up. It's nothing that these nations can do, you know. Esau Edom is trying to do something about it, but he can't do nothing about it, you know. These nations can't do nothing about it. This is the book of Revelations 11 and 9. It says, and, uh, and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days, and they have. I believe that's roughly 350 years. You know, I believe from 16, uh, what's that, 16, 19 to about the 1960s, 1970s, you know, with, uh, you know, with, uh, with the truth being, you know, uh, brought back to our people, you know, starting with, uh, Abba Bivens, 
uh, and those other nations is talking about the heathen nations. And nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, right? Us, our dead bodies. It's not talking about us being, uh, you know, literally dead, but spiritually dead. Shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves, right? So we're walking around in a dead state, and the nations knew we were in a dead state. You know, the nations wanted us in a dead state, you know, so we want to rise, you know, and, you know, and proclaim what is ours again, you know, because like I said before, you know, um, the nations don't know, uh, the nations, you know, don't want us to know who we are, because if we know who we are, you know, we know who our power is, and we know who our power is, you know, these nations are going to fall back under our foot, you know, so these nations want us to be in a low state, these nations don't want us, you know, to have, you know, the uh, ties with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Going back to Judah 5, you know, I'm going to quote it again, you know. Even back then, the heathens knew that, you know. But to close it out, let's get to 2 Maccabees. This is the book of 2 Maccabees uh, 6 and 1. It says, not long after this, the king sent an old man of Athens to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers and not to live after the laws of Yahweh. Right, uh, Khan. It says, uh, and to pollute. Also, the temple of Jerusalem, and to call, uh, and to call it the temple of Jupiter Olympus, and that in uh, Jerusalem of Jupiter, the defender of strangers, as they did desire that dwell in, uh, in the place, right? You know, uh, during the time I believe the Romans, you know, they want to, you know, they, um, you know, they tried to cut us off, you know, from uh, following the law, statutes, and commandments, you know. It says the coming in uh, of this mischief was sore and grievous to the people. For the temple was filled with riot and rebelling by the Gentiles who uh, dallied with harlots and had to do with women with the circuit of the holy places. And besides that, brought in things that were not lawful. So they were doing things, you know, uh, you know, the heathen were doing things, you know, uh, I believe this is the time of the Romans, you know, were doing things, you know, to make us, you know, depart from our power, depart from our heritage, you know, by doing things that were not lawful. It says the altar also was filled with profane things which the law forbiddeth. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient fast, or to profess, uh, or to profess himself to be a uh, Salakia to, or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. Right? These heathens knew, you know, that if we were following our law, statutes, and commandments, you know, doing everything that Yahweh Bashem Yahshua wanted us to do, that we could not be touched. You know. So what did the, you know? What did the nations do? I believe this time it was doing the Romans, you know, they tried to cut us off from our heritage, you know, from following, for, you know, from keeping our customs, you know, let's see, uh, so like, I think this is a time doing Ptolemy, yep, let's see, uh, yeah, let's continue, uh, Verse 5, it says, the altar also was filled with profane things which the law forbiddeth. It says, neither was it lawful for a man to keep the Sabbath days or ancient fasts or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. It says, in the day of the king's birth, every month they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices. And when the fast of uh, Bacchus was kept, the Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus carrying ivy. It says, moreover, there went out a decree to the neighbor, uh, to the neighbor cities of the heathen by the suggestions of Ptolemy Akan, this was the time of the Ptolemy, the Ptolemies, you know, against the Jews that they shall observe the same fashion uh, and be partakers of their sacrifices. It says that whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles shall be put to death, then might a man have seen the present misery. Yeah, so basically, you know, um, you know, during this time, you know, you know, the, uh, during the time of Ptolemy, you know, there was uh, more than one Ptolemy, you know, if you know, you know, if you know the history, you know, uh, the Syrian wars, you know. Um, yeah, so basically, you know, they want to, they wanted, you know, to basically follow after them, you know, to, you know, to, uh, to not follow our customs, you know, to not do the things, you know, that Yahweh Bashim Yahshua wanted us to do. You know, this is the same thing that the heathens are doing in this present time right now. I read the Psalms 83, you know, they're trying to uh, cut us off from being a nation so the name of Israel may be no more remembered. Because if we know who we are, you know, if we know who our power is, you know, we'll be indestructible. It's nothing that these nations can do. And the nations know that. So they try to do, you know, anything possible, you know, to uh, to put stumbling blocks in front, of, in front of our people to make our people go off, you know. But the Habashim Al-Shah is bringing all that to naught, you know, in these times that we're living in.
you know? You know, so I just wanted to bring that out. So, Lord willing, I hope this lesson was edifying. I want to end up by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai Ba'ashem, Rakakwadash, the one is the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, taught us the truth and salutations for the hopefully light that's around the fourth from the root of load. Lord willing, I hope this was edifying. Until next time, Wah, Ababa Ba, Shalom.